Welcome to Book Me Podcast, sponsored by Nimbus Publishing. I'm Lindsay Glode Rainingbird. Join me as we journey through contemporary Canadian literature, reading as much as we can and chatting with authors, illustrators, and other bookish folk, celebrating our dynamic, diverse, and vibrant national literary scene as we go. So grab a snack, get cozy, break that binding, dog ear those pages, let's dig into it. Today we have a real treat. Two Cape Breton celebrity influencers, Tracy and Martina, are here to talk about their book, It's Tracy and Martina, Hun: A Guide to Cape Breton Living, just in time for the autumn tourist influx. They are bold, funny, and a slice of realness the overfiltered world needs right now. Two best friends ready to give you tips on living your best life the Cape way, no matter where you are. So hi, Tracy. Hi, Martina. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Hi, sexies. sexies. It's Tracy Hahn. And I'm your girl, Martina. Thanks for having us. Oh my God, I'm that excited. I'm so excited to have you guys. So, your two best friends, tell me, how did you meet? Oh, we go way back, eh, Tracy? Oh, yeah, way back to the uh, bingo the hall. bingo hall. Yeah, we were really young, crawling around at the bingo hall. I was in fifth grade. and Well, our mothers were too cheap to get a babysitter, so they just take us along to bingo, right? And so that's how me and her met. That's true. I never thought about it like that, but that is true. Well, that's what it was. Yeah. So it was the parents brought you together. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah. And I was going through it, like had a bad case of the head lice. And my mother shaved my hair off with the dog shears there and uh, dragged me to bingo. And then Tracy saw me eh? and she's like, oh, well, I felt God. right bad. Heart of gold. Yeah, I know. She walked in. She said, come here, I'll give you a makeover. And I, I never met her before, but I went with her and she gave me a makeover and that was it. I felt like a million bucks. And then since then, like... Best friends ever since. Thick as thieves, yeah. yeah. Thick as thieves. And how do you stay so close over the years? What's what's a key to friendship? Drinking every weekend. Oh, yeah. Going out partying and like, well, getting fights and stuff. But like, Cape Breton, there's not enough people to stay in a fight with someone, right? No, that's right. <laughs> you can't hold on to grudges, right? No. Because if you do... We'd have no friends. Yeah, and you'd bump into them <laughs> at the grocery store yeah, and all that. Not, so not worth it. You wrote this book together. What was that like? Just chaos, right? Yeah, but it really, like... Lots of sleepless nights. I thought my family wasn't going to talk to me because we put a lot of personal information in there, a lot of stories. Stories and all that. You know, and... um no, I, I don't think any any of my family even read it yet. I know, and it's really funny too, because sometimes like people from Nimbus says, you know, they'll be like uh, emailing saying there's deadlines coming up, and I'm like, Tracy, we got to get that in. And uh, yeah. so we're there, like coming home from the bar, writing half the stories. We come back from the bar, and I'd say, you know what, I got to get a coffee into me. So we'd go to Tim Hortons and sit mm-hmm. with all the old men there at like six o'clock in the morning, and we'd be just scribbling stuff down. I know, and typing it out quickly. on our phones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You think that's good? And Martin would be like, yeah, put that in. It's probably good. And yeah. But we're happy with this. It's hilarious. I love it. You did the illustrations, right, Tracy? I did, yeah. Well, I got a side hustle, eh? I'm on Etsy selling, um, like, greeting cards. I so saw. Better than I've Hallmark. always been good at drawing. <laughs> that's just something that I like doing. So I thought, why not, you know, draw the pictures in the book? Artsy fartsy. I am. I Yeah, artsy fartsy type. You really are, Tracy. Yeah, very good, very talented. And you've been drawing your whole life? Oh, yeah. Started with the Sharpies on the wall back in Ma's apartment. And yeah, I've just been taken to it ever since, I guess. You're like scribblers and binders and all that all through school, just like mm-hmm. doodling. You that. know what my first drawing was? I draw that S. Oh, the S. Remember yeah. the S? Like I know the, the S. Superman like the S. Superman S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was the, that's how I knew like I got talent because I was the only one. In grade three, they could do it just perfect, right? Mm-hmm. People would get me to draw it on them and everything. And, and the bubble letters and all that. Oh, you're wicked at bubble letters. I am. Well, I always had the gel pens, too. I got to say, that's one thing. The only thing I ever shoplifted in my youth. Gel pens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ever, everyone's, everyone's Nobody's ever paid for gel, gel pens. pens. <laughs> yeah. What about you two? Big readers? No. You wrote a book? No. No. Oh. No. <laughs> no. Oh, God, no, no. Well, I knew you were going to ask me this, and I was... I was thinking in the shower, like, what do I, what do you read? I read statuses. I was just going to say Facebook. I read sta- Facebook statuses because mm-hmm. there's lots of uh, good drama going on there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're on the uh, Facebook rant room and people post all their statuses there. So uh, we're the first to read them and comment and share them, get people going, eh? Yeah. We're actually, um, we're going to be doing our own podcast pretty soon. Well, we're doing Ooh. like, kind of like a rant room thing. It's a little segment called I'm Flipping. Mm-hmm. So we'll be doing that. Do we want to reveal the name of the podcast? Yes. So. Yeah, Exclusive. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, you're so, hearing it here first. <laughs> our podcast is called 
shooting the shit. Got a couple segments, uh, like Martina said. I'm flipping is one of the segments. And, and then there's just we, wondering. Just wondering. Like so questions. we're answering questions and we'll give life advice and uh, you know, you can you just can send us your questions and we'll answer them on the podcast. Mm-hmm. We're just happy to help people. That's what we love to do. Mm-hmm. And where can they send you questions? We have an email set up. So it's Tracy and Martina podcast, gmail.com. Something you're flipping about. Just say, I'm flipping, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm just wondering um, what you say. Just wondering why my cousin smells like rubber. Like it can be it anything, can be right? Anything. <laughs> yeah. Just random. Just wondering how to change a baby, change a dirty bum. You know what I mean? Okay, like we'll, yeah. we'll try to do our best. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to be doing the podcast. And then we're doing the videos for the podcast. And that's going to be on Swearness. Swearnet. Okay, wait. I have a question for you then. Okay. Maybe you guys can give me some advice. So my daughter won't stop throwing tantrums all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do I got to do? Get her an iPad. Yep. Yep. Stick her in front of the TV. That's the first thing I would say. I'd say give her some nuggets, ketchup, and an iPad. Glass of pop, too. I find the oh, kids, kids, love, pop. kids just, love the glass of pop. Yeah. And if that don't work, just put her outside. You got to consider, like, what does the kid want? Because sometimes parents just want to fight with their kids just to push back. Yeah. But sometimes it's just it give, give the kid whatever it wants. A lot of people aren't doing that anymore. That's what you've always done with, with your kids, I, with Jeffrey I, and Brandy mm-hmm. Lynn. Yeah, just give the kids whatever they want. And I think it's more important to be friends with your kids. Oh, you're best friends with your oh, kids. Oh, yeah. I have a really good relationship with one of my kids, so. <laughs> so you're working on something else, too? TV show, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we got a show coming out. We have uh, one season already up on Swearnet. It's called Tracy Martina Dirty Deeds. Mm-hmm. And uh, we just uh, we just about finished the uh, second season. Yeah. So we're... that's coming out soon. Oh, it's going to be crazy, Tracy. Yeah, it's it's like a documentary about our lives, so cameras are just following us around. and We're like friggin' Kate Brett and Kardashians, like, pretty soon, uh-huh. hopefully. <laughs> but how did they discover you? How did that come to be? How did that happen? I don't know. I think I was talking to Ricky or something. Well, just like we're always doing videos up on like Facebook and YouTube and all that. And I guess they saw them and thought, oh, look at these two lunatics. Because mm-hmm. we are crazy. Yeah. We're crazy, we're, Tracy. Well, we're out there. That's for sure. Yeah. We're just doing our own thing, beating to our own drum. And uh, I guess they thought, yeah, let's give them a reality show. <laughs> we always need more of those. Uh, yeah. I always say that. Not enough reality shows. They got us a glass of wine here, eh? It's only 11 o'clock in the morning. We thought they that's know what us. you'd want. They know <laughs> us. Is it ever good? Be going out after this. Strawberry eh? flavor, strawberry kiwi or something. Where can you go out after this? Legion. 11 o'clock, Legion. Yeah. Legion's always going. Legion's and it's nice open. and dark in there and cool. Yes. Oh, AC going. Yeah. Now that the pandemic's over, how did that treat us up there? During the whole lockdown, no, me and Tracy had a friggin' ball, eh? Because we were doing the live streams. Yeah. Oh, and that was mint. We'd do these uh, Saturday night live streams mm-hmm. on Facebook, and uh, we'd have thousands of people watching them. Honest to God. From eh, all over the world. Yeah, it started off like maybe 400 people, and then by the end of it, 16,000. Ooh. 16,000 well, people. Well, because we were locked in, and ev- everyone was locked in, right? And so me and her were talking, like, what? Like, we're bored to death. I like, know, just like. Got to do something to stay social. Having some drinks, and so, like, we're a good time, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that's half of it. People just wanted someone to party with. They did. You've got the TV show. You got the podcast coming up, and you also been doing music videos and all that. Do you have like plans for your music career? Well, I said to Martina, I always wanted to release an album. That's true. Because I'm, I'm like, really good at rapping. You really are, Trace, and I do my best. I'm like kind of tone deaf, but um, I don't know. I'm just like wherever the wind takes me. Eh? Yep. Tracy calls me up. She's like, we're going to do a music video, and. I'm like, okay, hey, let me let me I jump in the that, tub. I love that though. I love that you're always down. Oh, for I'm down anything. for anything. That's what people love about no, me. No, Martina's already <laughs> nuts like that. No, I'll do anything twice. Whatever crazy idea I drum up, she's just like down. What's it like to have so many people with their eyes on you now? I don't think about it like that. No, because we've always been like local legends, right? It, like bar stars and all that. Like when we well, show up. I come up... from a family of local legends. No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And your uncle Alec and your mom and. But even before we were on the internet, like me and her were always going out. Like everyone knew us, anyways. So yeah. it's nothing new for someone to approach me, like at Sobeys or something, and just say, "Like, nice to meet you. Can I get your picture?" Like, and I'm there in the meat section, just like taking, taking selfies. Yeah. yeah. 
So it's about that time, changing of the leaves and everything. Everybody wants to go to Cape Breton, but you guys in your book gave us a lot of other alternative things you could do. Now, I don't want to give them all away, but maybe you can give us like one or two top tips for people who are heading to Cape Breton for the fall. It's true. Like, what? that's me and Tracy. Like, we're always talking. Like, you see the commercials on TV and it's like people driving around the Cabot Trail and the leaves and the fiddles and people eating lobsters on the beach. And it's like yeah like that's good and that's tons of people doing that for tourism but we're like what about us down in the rest of cape breton like by sydney and glace bay and water for sydney mines and all that and like we're not getting no publicity so we try to do our own list of things that people can do Mm -hmm. um i'm very proud of that tracy yeah no me too what do you think is something uh something fun to do in like sydney glace bay and waterford industrial cape breton in the fall if you are not going to see like the leaves because the leaves are nice, like they are, but that's not all we got to offer. Just like things are getting cozier, right? I like having fires. Yeah, you can still have fires and burn the leaves. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's actually, uh, that's something that I, I, a lot of people don't think about it, but through the fall, there's still a lot of grass fires. Yes. And then the leaves are catching oh, too. Oh, yes. And that's one of our favorite things around Glace Bay and Waterford, like, Whenever you hear the sirens, you jump in the car, follow after them. You know, if you can catch something burning down oh, that's when the best. you're in Cape Breton. Sometimes people light different bars on fire around town and or they'll light people's houses on fire. Just, you know, like arson. Yeah, when, and it's usually just older buildings that are ready to go. Yeah, but so, they're taking care of it. Absolutely. like. And so you see on Facebook, like... Too uh, much money to fix them up. Yeah, Burn certain building is burning down and then you, you just get in the car and... Go and just stand by the curb. Yeah, and everyone's there, so it's like social things. And too, I right? usually bring like a beer or something, or I'm bringing like a, a cooler. I love watching a fire. That's probably one of my favorites. I'll stay there until it's right to the ground, too, away. Eh? And chatting with the firefighters yeah. and everything. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, they can't make you leave. They can't. No, because it's public, public area. Yeah, and they'll say to me, "You got to move back," and I say, "No, I don't." Mm-hmm. <laughs> So one of my favorite parts of your book is when you're talking about heavy garbage day. What's the best stuff that you've gotten out of the trash? It's like a friggin' free for all, eh, Tracy? Oh, yeah. The lids off of barbecues. You can get 30 bucks for one of those. People are just putting whole barbecues out. Can you imagine that? Sometimes they have the propane tank attached to them. Like, there's a deposit on that. Hello? <laughs> I'm always looking for um, milk crates, pallets, washer drums. Yep. Those are like the staples because washer drum you can turn into a fire pit. The pallets you can, you know, build a step with, yep. build different coffee tables. I've seen a lot of stuff on Pinterest going around with pallets. My friend built an entire table out of pallets. Yeah, that's no, well, beautiful. that's smart. You know what I find weird, though, is like when, when you put all your stuff out to the end of the driveway mm-hmm. and then you got someone, like as soon as you, as soon as you put it out, they're driving by in their truck mm-hmm. and you're still in the yard, like, you know, arms on your hips, just like staring at them and they don't talk to you i, that, I find, find that, that eh? really uncomfortable that happens all the time and i'll get close to them and like i'm staring at them because i'm chatty you're and, chatty like, they just they won't make eye contact and i can tell like okay probably not from the community yeah or they have some sort of like there might be some people that feel a little bit of shame around picking through garbage no shame there's no shame in it i'd sooner no than have a conversation with i'll you bring know, out like, a cup of tea like i can tell you the whole story on where that mattress has been and everything oh yeah that happened to uh, me and my husband one time we were driving through and we saw all this great stuff on the side of the road and we're like okay yeah it's mm-hmm. free right because yeah. it's on the side so we're just packing it all into the back we got like a table got all these fancy like fountain pens and stuff and then right when we're about to leave, we look up and some somebody was coming out of the house and we we're just like, oh, no, we had to go. I said, go, okay, go. Okay, no, so you're one of them. So like, <laughs> what, this is, uh, you'll laugh at this. So I'm putting everything out a couple of years ago and I put out the futon, right? Because right. trust me, it had to go. And I'll tell you why. So I'm there and someone's loading the futon onto the truck and I'm just taking out, like I had a lamp that I threw in the pile, right? And uh, I'm just waiting there, trying to talk to them. Hi. And just like Tracy said, they're just like, they're pretending they're ghosts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if they would have talked to me, I would have told them that that was the dog futon. Uh-oh. That's because I, I breed Rottweilers. And that's every birth, every dog birth from my dog Destiny was on that futon. <laughs> yep. oh. And I would have told them how to get the stains out and everything right. But they're going to have to figure that out for themselves. So if you're out there with a uh, futon from my house and you're listening, um. Spray nine. 
you're going to want to get some spray nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something I've been doing, um, I was telling Tracy about, is a lot of people have trampolines in Cape Breton, and wind takes them, blows them into, I don't know, elephant ears or the bushes or something, and then they, they get all screwed up, right? And then they'll throw them, like, so half torn apart trampoline, they'll put them out by the curb, right? I'm going around, I'm noticing that many chewed up trampolines. I'm taking the parts home. I'm like Frankensteining them together because a trampoline's a trampoline. They're all made the same, right? They all got the same pipes. So I'm going around, I'm getting the springs if they're not rusted off. So I'm taking, like, I'm foraging the good parts of the trampolines, taking them home, and I'm setting them up in the backyard, taking pictures. You don't a couple of them. Posting them onto a uh, marketplace. That's a side guess, hustle. Guess how much I'm getting a trampoline? Oh, uh, like. Turning on the time of year. 100 bucks. Oh, no. More? Around 200. Oh. Gr- grading day? Around grading day? 300. So what's grading day? What do you mean? We do it here, but you guys have like a big thing, right? Yeah. Big grading day. Yeah, yeah you, grading, grading day. Grading like, day. That's like biggest. Don't you guys have parties and stuff? Well, there's grad parties and that's like the, that's a different thing. That's like the final I'm grading day. I'm shocked right now. Yeah, I didn't know. You that... don't know what grading day is. Well, we never called it that. I, I grew up in Lawrencetown down like by okay. the beach. Okay. We never called what it. What did you call it? I don't know. You didn't last get... day of school. <laughs> no, no, oh, no, Graden Day. Like you gotta hide the hide the Graden Day starts early. You go in. You see if you passed or failed. You yep. sit in with the teacher. And you could take your little brother or sister. Your mm. parents wait for you outside, mm-hmm. like you're sweating bullets in the classroom, making sure you you passed. Yep. Then you go out and get uh, taken around to all your family. Yeah, what's they your give report you cards card? Cards and money, and they look at your report card and, and say, "Very you good, good, very good." Then they give you, you know, twenty bucks in a card, and yep. then you go to the mall, and then they get you a bike, and then you get like, I don't know, probably now getting iPads and all that. Oh yeah, that's like it's like another Christmas for the kids. It can get very expensive. And then but... what I used to do when when we were younger too is you'd burn everything. So all my books, all my loose leaf, mm-hmm. all my scribblers, all my colored pencils, oh, my yeah. book bag, everything right into a fire. Oh yeah, every all the great kids in the neighborhood would exactly. have a great big fire. Yeah, I would everything. have all the kids over to my backyard and throw all their scribblers and everything in the washer drum and marshmallows and all that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's Done. cute though because a lot of people in town, even if uh, they don't have kids in their life, like I know there's a, a store in Nevada Forest, and you go there any great day and you get free ice cream. So it's just to make sure the kids are finishing school. Right? Well, the store right. okay is giving out free hot dogs too on great day. Yep, that might be a good tourism thing, Tracy. Mm-hmm. Around great day, people from the mainland, if they want to take the kids to Cape Breton, because there's lots of there's um, lots handouts. Too free things so that's lots of kids drawn on the road with chalk chalk yeah um all the kids are usually at the mall by like the afternoon after they go oh, see the grandparents the police are the police take them around what do you mean police take them around the mall don't they oh i never heard of that okay no i always see the police there great day because you know it's i thought day. that was for shoplifters for theft. Maybe okay yeah it for theft. <laughs> to end it on a creepy note do you guys do costumes or anything for halloween what's what's well, we, your halloween just thing just want to say this first um we were talking about this the other day, about the uh, the chips, bags of chips and the... Um, Halloween chips and all that. The sweets. Mm-hmm. Get that the year before. Oh, yeah, that's a major life hack. That's something we talked about on the podcast. Like, all kinds of things, eh, that, like, they're more expensive when you need them. People don't realize that, oh, they but they are. Oh, they the price. Yeah, you go to the drugstore and it's like, big box of Halloween candy. How much is that in October versus November? You've got to pay attention to these things. Mm-hmm. People don't... So what we do is stock up the day after Halloween. You know what the kids are getting at my house this year? What's that? The uh, Mr. Solids. What are Mr. Solids? Well, I got a bunch of uh, Mr. Solid Easter bunnies from uh, last year. They were on 40 cents. So I said, I'm getting 250 of them. (laughs) (laughs) You're laughing. (laughs) Laugh all you want, but they're all getting Mr. Solids. Don't you think you're going to confuse the kids, though? They're not going to know if it's Easter Halloween. Oh, no. You take no. them out of the box, son. You break them up and put them in a Ziploc bag. That's what I do. See, I, I was with Tracy eh? when she picked them all up. I, I stocked up on the Mr. Solids, too. But difference between Tracy and me? Willpower. Yeah, see, I, I don't like them. <laughs> I sit down in the evening, right, watch my shows, and uh, I'll just mow through the Mr. Solids. But, uh, yeah, no, what was your question? You were saying, I don't like, even remember. Oh, with co- costumes. Yeah, what do you guys do for Halloween? I think you've been a fairy for the last, what, 12 years? Yeah, fairy, and I went as a nurse last year. Oh, you did, yeah. I had the nurse costume from Amazon. 
I like getting a little skanky on Halloween. I'm one of them. Yeah. See, I'm scary because I love horror movies. Kids come to my house, eh, and I'm like, half my face is hanging off with a zipper. and Yeah. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> Remember the time you were sticking the, you had the cornflakes all stuck to your face in the spirit gum? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I went yeah, out you, afterwards. I think you said you had scabies or something. Or... No, because what it was, Tracy, you're going to laugh. I had um, my cold sores flaring up. So oh, I decided to make it look like my whole was. face was a cold sore. Yeah, yeah. that's like a life tip. <laughs> okay, so maybe you have like a scary story in the book you want to read for us? I could read you um, the scary story that my poppy told me. Do that, Tracy. You want me to read that one? Yep. You get goosebumps every time I read that, eh? I do. So this is from a section of the book called Freaky Stories. Me and Martina share our creepiest stories in, in here. So this one is called The Devil on the Tracks. One story my poppy used to tell me and my little cousin was the devil on the tracks. My poppy was a coal miner. My poppy quit school and started working in the pit when he was only young. Sin. He told me the coal companies used to like the younger boys because they would crawl into the tighter crevices of the mine and dig out the coal. I get right fired up when he talks about it. It pisses me off to no extent the way they were treated back then. And it was dangerous work. And all the men, they were right brave, risking their lives, eh? Mm-hmm. Just by going to work every day, risking their lives. I know. Back then, people were right religious too, right? So if they thought they seen something from God that was a sign that they shouldn't go to work that day, let me tell you, they were staying home. Oh, yeah. One day, my poppy was on the way to the pit, lunch tin in hand, just like any other day. Now, to get to number 20, him and his buddies used to walk the tracks. One of the superstitions amongst the miners was that if you seen a woman walking towards you on the tracks, you automatically had to turn around and go home. It was worse than seeing a black cat. Oh, yeah. And just so you know, number 20 is one of the names of the pits. The pits all had their mm-hmm. named numbers. Yeah. So on this particular day, they seen a figure emerging through the fog. It was woman. But not like no woman they seen from Glace Bay before. She was dressed just like she walked off the set of a Hollywood movie. Blonde hair, all nice and set. Beautiful fur coat on, gold bangles, rings, necklaces, decked out, eh? Mm-hmm. He said he, couldn't t- he could tell she wasn't from the Bay, just by looking at her. As the woman got closer to the men, they could see that she had a big smile across her face, like an evil smile almost, like picture like the Joker. Mm-hmm. I get chills telling this part. So... The men were stood still in their path, and the woman opens up, up her mouth like she was going to say, like, going on, boys, or something like that. But nope, she f***ing growls. And he said it sounded like a creature straight from the bowels of hell, Tracy. All the men nearly shit themselves, right? So they booted her down the tracks to get away as fast as possible. None of them looked back, only my poppy. And what he said he seen haunts him to this day. What is this? He said, Tracy. She didn't have human feet, eh? She had red hooves. Hooves. Poppy swears he seen the devil that day. Do you got chills or what? Oh, yeah. That's scary. Right Creepy, down eh? my back. I Shivers. Know, yeah, I every know. time. I wonder who she was. Well, she had hooves for feet. Pretty sure it was the devil, Martina. Like, Poppy always told me that the devil likes to take the form of very enticing creatures, right? Okay. Now that makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was just thinking she might have been from Halifax. Or, yeah, okay. No, no. Something else that was really, you know, eye-catching in the book was I saw some really beautiful pictures of you, Martina. Oh, the ones of me. The full page spread. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> Thanks for saying that, honey. I got brave. I was. I lost quite a bit of weight. And I noticed some of the women around town, they were doing the, uh, the boudoir shoots. And I said to Tracy, I'm like, I'd love to do that because I was very proud of myself. She said, you should, Martina. There's one of them that's a little bit more racy, and that's in the book, and you can see that. It's still tasteful, though. But it's tasteful. That's I said to the photographer, I said, like, I want something that is beautiful and a little bit like... Um, but that can still be hung in your living room. Yes, so I have that blown up massive um, in the living room, and I'm wearing something that's a little bit revealing, and... I was roaring going into the Walmart photo center with you getting to that get printed, printed out on oh, canvas. I like, know. I have the mug, too. No but, shame, though. Like, I love the ones of me with my, my breasts out, but my favorite, Tracy, is the, um, the empowerment one. Mm-hmm. So what I've done is, um, and you can see it in the book, there's a, there's a photo of me, and I just, when I look at that, I feel so powerful. You were owning all your flaws. I was you were owning, owning all the nasty things that people have ever said to you. So this was Tracy's idea, artsy-fartsy. She took um, an eyeliner. And she said, okay, Martina, 
tell me all the hateful things people have ever said about you. And you're going to put them on your skin and you're going to wear them like a badge. So I'll read some of them here. Um, I get shivers every time I see this picture, Tracy. So right on my forehead, skank. I cross my cheek, dirty. Um, we have uh, bad mom, hateful, parvo breeder. And that's, you don't got to read them all if you're not going to. No, I want, I'm owning it, Tracy. Parvo breed, so people were saying that um, the dogs that I breed have parvo, but that's... They don't? Th they don't anymore, no. Um, ignorant, not bar, <laughs> heavy set. Wow. I know. Smells like deep fryer. Wow. That one. Yeah. That one, Tracy. That's just like a punch to the gut. Yep. Um, and she hit me in the parking lot one time. That was the status. But that was... that. That really happened. You did hit her in the parking lot. We're not sure. We're not sure. Well, because I was there. Mm, Tracy. But yeah, no. Um. So yeah, I wrote all those things across my body, and I was shit myself putting that book out because I'm putting it all out there, and like my kids never saw them pictures, but a lot of people felt very empowered by that, and I was getting messages left, right, and center. So I love that. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, guys. Thanks, hon. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you. Go buy our book and watch our series and follow us on Instagram at It's Tracy Hunt, at Your Girl Martina. We're on Facebook. We're on TikTok. So, uh, and what's your Etsy for the cards? Oh, my Etsy is, uh, it's just Etsy.com slash shop slash Tracy and Martina. So that's where, if you want to get any of our merch, it's there. And I got all my cards there, too. Yep. So check out season two, Tracy Martina's Dirty Deeds, coming out on Swearnet very soon. And uh, anything else that we're going to be doing. And buy the book and take it with you when you go to Cape Breton this fall. It's Tracy and Martina Hun, A Guide to Cape Breton Living is available now everywhere books are sold. And thank you for listening and hanging out with us. Join me next time on this book lover's journey as we try to read more, read Canadian, read local. You know, all the good things. <laughs>